Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and would you believe it, it's time for Ask a Herbert Erpaderp once again. Before we get to the questions, I want to quickly let patrons know that there's a poll over on Patreon where I'm asking you to choose between two models that you want to see built on stream first, and thus made into a video first. The poll will be active for the next few days, so there's no rush or even any obligation to go and vote, but I would appreciate it if you did. If you are not a patron and you want to do things like taking part in polls or seeing videos like this one a bit early, there's a link in the description. Okay, now for the questions. The Derpy KV2 says, will you ever build another plane? Yeah, one day. I do have a couple of plane kits in my stash, but I'm not a big plane guy. I like building armor and vehicles a bit more, but I will eventually put together another plane. Trekan Belovich said, Because I know you are Herbert Erpaderp, I wonder if I may call you Angelo. Well, if you want to. I won't know that you are talking to me though, and that might be an issue if you want to communicate effectively. Skeletor said, Do you like the movie Memphis Bell? I haven't seen it since I was very, very young. It's probably perfectly fine as movies go, and it's kind of a classic, isn't it? So I guess I'm indifferent, having no real memory of seeing it. M18 Hellcat said, What model company would you recommend? I personally prefer Airfix. I can't help but think you might be trolling there with the Airfix thing. To be fair, Airfix does get a lot of underserved hate, and while I'm not a big fan, they do have very good customer service. Either way, my answer really depends. What is the person looking for recommendations looking for? If they're looking for some nice wargaming models, I would definitely recommend Rubicon. And while Rubicon models are quite good, it's not really going to be a great recommendation for somebody who is looking for a display piece with a lot of fine detail. And then it depends if they're looking for something specific. Some companies might not have a model of that specific thing, or it might be lower quality than the rest of their range. I guess in general though, I would recommend Rubicon models, and if you're not into wargaming kits, it's hard to go wrong with Tamiya. I don't really like to make recommendations of stuff I've not built. If you're looking for that kind of thing, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there with that weird brand loyalty thing, even for kits they've never built, but that's not the sort of thing I do. But there are plenty of higher than Tamiya quality things out there with extra details and photo etch and metal barrels and that sort of thing, but a lot of it I haven't built. So as a baseline, Tamiya is consistently good and reasonably priced. Surely there's some elitist approved brands that I'm, for whatever reason, expected to mention, but whatever. Rubicon and Tamiya. Pretty good kits. Head of Secret Science Boys said, Are you just as annoyed as I am that neither War Thunder or World of Tanks has the Bob Semple? Annoyed might be a bit strong a word. It doesn't really bother me that much, but I am kind of surprised that neither of them have added it, even just as something kind of silly, like an event or something. I mean, they add all manner of paper panzers and things like that. Why not the Bob Semple? Digital Rocket said, What's the strangest material you've ever made a model out of, either partially or entirely? I haven't really built a model out of anything strange, or if I have, I've completely forgotten about it. It's been plastic, resin, and metal for me the entire time. Mouse Chan said, Can you add a music bot like Rhythm? Most people here will appreciate it. I don't know, I don't see much point in a music bot. And I certainly don't want one in audio channels that I use. I think this might be a case where you're conflating most people with what you want, but I don't know. Is this something people actually want or would use? Let me know. I would have to look into it, and I can see having something where people just play whatever music they want being annoying, and yet another thing where edgelords will pop up with their racism and homophobia to ruin things, and I really don't want to moderate an audio channel doesn't sound fun at all. But if it really is something people want, let me know. Smoes said, If you could resurrect someone, who would it be? The condition on this is that they have to have been alive post-1970 so they can mesh into society and not be an outcast. Mine would be Andy Warhol. Hmm. This is a very good question, and I spent a non-zero amount of time pondering on it. I mean, I could say Leonard Cohen, or René Abergenois, or Aaron Eisenberg. 
or Phil Lennett from Thin Lizzy. Let's just go with Leonard Cohen. There's a lot of cool people who've had some sort of impact or influence on my life, if only in some small way, some of who I'm definitely forgetting, which makes me feel slightly bad. It's probably not really worth investing too much time in hypotheticals, so I guess let's just go with Leonard Cohen. Maybe then I could see him live. That would be awesome. Trekan Belovich said, Is the Ferdinand Heavy Tank Hunter by Zvezda in 15mm on your mind when thinking about what to paint next? I did consider it when I chose to paint the Yag Tiger, but I probably won't be doing it soon. I try not to do things that are too similar consecutively, though the next painting video will be something German, and I am trying to get that Star Wars ATST painted before the group build ends, so I guess that should give you an idea of what's coming up. M18 Hellcat said, Which would you prefer, Churchill Aviary with Fascine or Sherman Crab? I think I'll take the Sherman Crab. It's a bit more weird and interesting. Plus, crabs are cool. Anime Libera said, Do you like Belle Delphine? I've never heard of them. In the comment section of Last Fortnite's Ask a Herpa Derpa Derp, Yan Tima said, BF109 or Spitfire? Which plane do you prefer? I feel indifferent, really. I guess if I'm forced to choose one, I'll choose the Spitfire. It's just a bit more sleek looking, I guess. Both are pretty cool, though, and I don't see much point in choosing one over the other. Alex Trenchard said, If you like the Sherman Calliope for even sillier rocket-enabled action, check out the Sherman Tulip. It also has a very flowery name. I do like the Sherman Tulip, and I think the same rocket system was also mounted on Cromwells and Staghounds and probably a whole bunch of other stuff. But I think the Calliope looks a bit more silly and more entertaining. More rockets, too. I don't have any models of a Sherman Tulip, but I would like one. Surely such a thing exists. I'll have to go looking. I think another rocket Sherman, more like the Calliope, was the Whizbang. What a good name. Trekan Belovich said, It's a bit sad that Ask a Herpet Herpet doesn't have that much views. I've recently watched some older Ask a Herpet Herpet Herp and I liked it. Just like this one, meaning the previous one, obviously. Please don't stop making them, even if you become PM of Australia. Don't worry, I won't become Prime Minister of Australia. It seems like you have to be a pretty big piece of shit to be eligible for that role. But I'm glad that you enjoy Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb. The videos might not get many views, but there's at least a handful of people who enjoy it, and there's consistently enough questions to keep it going. I personally like it when there are questions that make me think or laugh. Both of those are good, and I think it's worth doing for that. It is a pretty niche video series, so it's not all that surprising that it doesn't get a lot of views. If I was some sort of celebrity, there would be a ton of views, but as it is, not that many people care about the opinions of some dingus who does stuff with bits of plastic on the internet. And that's perfectly fair. I guess the way to get more views is for people to share the videos on social media and things like that. Though really, I would prefer people to share my modelling videos if they were to share anything at all. Either way, I'm pleased that you like Ask a Herpa Derpa Derp, and I do plan to continue. EP Art says, What's the dumbest question you were ever asked? Hmm, to be honest, I don't really get a whole lot of genuinely dumb questions in Ask a Herpa Derpa Derp. There are a lot of repetitive or uncreative questions, like Favourite Tank, for example. I would say the stupidest thing I've ever been asked was many, many years ago while I was getting food while out drinking. I was wearing a Dead Kennedys Nazi Punk's Fuck Off shirt. If you know the Dead Kennedys, you'll have seen that logo. It's a big crossed out swastika. A very angry older lady, though not really old enough to be senile, was aggressively asking if I was a Nazi. I asked if she was stupid and she didn't seem at all impressed. She really seemed convinced that it was a Nazi shirt. She didn't seem drunk or impaired at all, so the only real conclusion is that she was stupid. Very stupid. If you want to ask a really dumb question, you're going to have to work pretty hard to beat that. Rock Strongo said, Don't you feel embarrassed when you make mistakes or say dumb stuff? Or like when you don't know what the parts of the tank everybody knows? And like people say insulting stuff about you? Does that make you mad? And... Yeah, do ooh ban people from giving 
Criticums? Hmm, reading it like that feels a bit like punching down, but whatever. I feel like you might be trying to troll here, though I'm going to answer as though you aren't. I don't feel embarrassed. Everybody makes mistakes, and if you can't own your mistakes then you don't deserve to own any of your successes. People who are worried about being seen to make mistakes usually get nothing done because they're too busy worrying about what people will think, or when the perfect time to do whatever the thing is, is. Plus, when I make a mistake, maybe somebody else can learn from it, and that's not a bad thing. There are people who obsessively study every little bit of a tank or whatever piece of equipment, and that's cool. Those people can be really helpful and interesting. But there are also people who do this and get angry about others not having that knowledge and assuming it's something everybody knows, which is of course very lame. Especially when they're the gatekeeper -y sort who think you need to know everything about a thing to enjoy the thing. Personally, I am quite forgetful. I don't enjoy being forgetful, but I am. Also, I'm not really interested in spending a whole bunch of time trying to figure out what a random piece is when I'm writing a video, so it becomes a thing or a doodad or whatever. I don't pretend to be an expert and I've never presented myself as such, and I don't really care if my not knowing a thing bothers anybody. If you get upset about how other people do their hobby, then you've got a problem, and I hope you fix it one day. Also, I do see a lot of insults directed towards me. But here's the thing about insults. For them to be effective, you have to value the opinion of the person trying to insult you. And most of the time, that's just not the case. If some rando on the internet thinks I should kill myself because I'm an awful modeler, or that I'm incompetent for gluing or painting a bit of plastic in ways they don't like, why should I care? I don't see why anybody should care about that sort of thing, but some people get really upset about it. As to banning people for criticism, I've never done that. It seems to be a popular opinion with stupid people that we don't allow critique or criticism on my Discord server. Actually, I don't know if you're trying to say critique or criticism. They're not really the same thing, but people do use those terms interchangeably. Both of them are fine and welcome on my Discord server. But if you're going to critique, it should actually be critique. Usually when somebody is upset that they've been warned about their critique, in quotation marks if my inflection wasn't enough, it's because they've no idea how to give critique. If somebody were to say, Duh, that's shit, or needs X, as an example, that's not critique. That's just being a dick and unhelpful. If said person takes exception to being told not to be a dick and then starts doubling down, then they're not likely to be sticking around long. So nobody has been banned for actually giving critique or discussing models. It's not a modelling server, but there is a lot of modelling there, and that sort of thing is welcome because it does help people improve. Of course, people have to be open to critique and not everybody wants it, and that's fine. Nobody's obligated to listen to what you say or care about what you think, and a lot of people don't seem to get that. Most of the bans, and there have been less than 20, are because somebody posted something racist or shitty in some way, and then almost always got argumentative and doubled down when given a warning. Usually whining about how it's okay because INTERNET CULTURE, or freedom of speech. Which is a clear sign that they don't understand freedom of speech at all. If you can't follow simple rules or be something approaching decent, then there are other places that you might fit in a bit better. Some of the best advice I've seen and would give to other people running communities or streaming or whatever is don't be afraid to ban people. Toxic people attract more toxic people and they don't really add anything. They just make the place a worse experience. The internet at large is kind of a shitty place. Some people seem to think that's a rule and that the internet has to be a shitty place. I want my Discord server to be a place where I'm happy to go and spend time in, and I want it to be that way for everybody, except people who are dickheads and think that they should be allowed to shit it up as much as they want. Furthermore, it's kind of a reflection of me and my values. If somebody comes in and sees a bunch of racism all over the place, their thoughts are going to be along the lines of, well this is clearly okay by Herbert, it's not hard to delete this stuff so he must share these values too. And I'm not really okay with that. That's not a welcoming place unless you're a piece of shit. Enough of that though. But speaking of Discord, let's check out some of the modelling work that's been shared in the modelling section over the last couple of weeks. 
First, we have this 28mm scale Puma by Monol. This is the plastic model from Warlord and Italeri, I think. Or was it just Warlord? I don't know. Either way, it's a good model and Monol has made it look amazing with his painting skills. I quite like what you've done with the stowage. The kit suggests that the spare wheel go on the rear of the hull, but instead, Monol, the rebel that he is, has put the wheel up on the engine deck and added a stowage box from another kit on the rear. There's also some other extra stowage around the place. Awesome work. Ratto has shared this swarm, which is not at all the technical term, of Romans. These are by Forged in Battle and Corvus Belly, and are in 15mm scale. They don't look 15mm, which is because of how well they're painted. They certainly look great. Ratto has done these as a commission for a friend. In my opinion, that friend has got a good deal no matter how much they paid for it. Colonel Paul, do not even try Gamma, shared this fantastic Sherman. The stowage on the engine deck looks to have been tied on with string, and a post from Paul saying that his nerves are about to burst leads me to that assumption. It looks amazing though, I would definitely consider it worth the time it must have taken. The model is a 135th scale M4 Sherman from Tamiya, and it's been painted to represent a Sherman of the 2nd US Armoured Corps, 66 Armoured Regiment, H Company, in Normandy in August 1944. Very specific, and also very nice work. You should definitely be very proud of it. Trekan Belovich has shared this Jagdpanzer 38T Hetzer, cue the angry nerds who don't like the name Hetzer. This Hetzer is named Armin, and is in 28mm or 156 scale by Rubicon Models, which is another very good model that I've had the pleasure of building myself, and Trekan has done an excellent job in painting this up. Somebody pointed out that the placement of the picture in the background looks like a movie poster, and, not gonna lie, I would definitely be tempted to watch it. Okay, so that's it for the modelling this fortnight. And as I say every fortnight, not everything has been shared, so if you want to see everything, head on over to the Discord server and check it out. There's a link in the description. As I vaguely recall saying last fortnight, we're also going to have a look at some of the art that's been shared on Discord in the last however long. First up, Corned Beef has shared this drawing of a City Rail Millennium M set. How did I know what that was called? Corned Beef was nice enough to label it. I'm not super familiar with New South Wales railway stuff, but this is really well done. Major General Bunk bought a stapler, but thought the logo on it was kind of questionable. And I guess there's a reason why the first three letters in the word are bolded there. Anyway, he's modified it into a Derptopian stapler. I really enjoyed this. Much better than the original. Good work. Miko Jansky has done a bunch of these Poland balls. Is that what you call them? Are they all Poland balls or is it just the Polish one that's a Poland ball? Whatever. Miko Jansky has done a bunch of them and they're really cool. Monol's Russia Ball has an AK, which I guess makes sense, and this one looks pretty rad as well. Though I do have to say that this one by Major General Bunk really amused me. I mean, I might be slightly biased, but it is pretty glorious. The KV-2 turret on top is great. General Spade shared this, saying something I did with new markers. I like it. There's no mention of what the markers were, but that's okay. It's quite well done. Also, it looks like you have a very similar cutting mat to mine. Nice. Issue, here's a tissue, shared this. I'm sure it's a character from something, but I don't know what. It's nicely done though, and I rather like its pointy barbed hat. Nice work. Here is Stuglife's first ever painting. It looks to me as though it's a tree in all four seasons. We only have two seasons here, hot and a little bit less hot, but I guess that's not really relevant. This is a really cool painting and I do hope to see more from you. And here's some Transformers that Head of Secret Science Boys has drawn. Very Transformery. Good work. I do often neglect to share the art, but I plan to change that. So if you're artistically inclined, and I know a lot of you are, go ahead and share some of your artwork in the Arts and Crafts section on Discord. I plan to share that more often in the future. I think I'm also going to start sharing some of the pet pictures from the pet section on Discord. 
that is one of my favourite channels, and I'm pretty sure most of you enjoy adorable pets, so why not share some on Ask a Herbert Herbida? Anyway, that's enough for now. Thank you to everybody who's shared their modelling and artworks, and thanks to those who asked questions. Also, of course, thank you to everybody who watches this video and all of my other videos. I appreciate you all. If you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe here on YouTube, follow my social media and Twitch stuff, the links for which can be found in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.